Welcome to Lift Your Legacy. My name is Jacob Rupp, father, husband, and rabbi. And each week we bring you an inspiring person or message to help you unlock your inner potential and create change that will impact the future. Thank you for listening and let's get to it. Hey everybody, uh, my guest today is Matt Erickson, who is the Director of Marketing at National Positions. Now, Matt has had a very wide career, did all kinds of different things. He's found his niche. And what's really exciting is talking about his entrepreneurial and his career journey. Now, so many of us think I have to sort of figure it out from the get-go or we look around at other people and we're like, why didn't I have it figured out? Or there's not this one thing I'm supposed to be doing. And in most cases, that's not how people find where they're supposed to be. Matt has a tremendous amount of practical advice to share. He's very candid about his both personal and his entrepreneurial and his business journey. And I think there's a lot of practical advice. There's a lot of practical advice really you could take away from this conversation that will help you guide yourself through life, through your business life, and not being afraid, as he says, to take some left turns. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast has been brought to you by me, Jacob Rupp, and Jacob Rupp's Consulting, uh, Technically Lift Your Legacy. Now, I have to be honest, I help clients often get out of their own way. And something that has really held me up was exactly the same thing, that I was in my own way. For months, people have been saying, you know, talk about your coaching, talk about how you help people, share it, etc. And I had a really hard time putting it out there. Why? Because it's not that I don't think I do a great job. I've seen amazing results from my clients, you know, 10x, uh, more than that, businesses, fixed relationships, um, helped people lose a lot of weight, people go on the path of, of making goals and fulfilling their goals, all of these things. I know I do it. And I've been in the coaching space long enough to know that there's a lot of people that don't really deliver. And the ones that do really deliver are, are worth literally their, their weight in gold because so often we're held back by stuff. And it's just like, if only I could get over that, if only I could work through that. And I help people do that. But for me, my big holdup was sharing that I do this in a big way, in a public way, especially on the podcast, because it's awkward. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm just making the podcast to, to sell you stuff or to talk about stuff. So that, that's not what I'm doing. Um, my point is like this. My coaching business is expanding. I'm taking on a few more clients. If you are someone that is struggling in the area of self-esteem, goal setting, health, relationships, or your, or your business, really, um, reach out. I don't know if we're a good fit to work with each other. What I can guarantee you is that we'll get on the phone for half an hour. Uh, I'll hear the kind of challenges you're having. You'll get a good feel if you don't know me yet of the kind of work I do, kind of program I would recommend for you. And if it's a great fit, we'll move forward. And if not, not. But I wanted to appreciate very much from the bottom of my heart, the fact that you guys all listen. I appreciate the amazing guests that I have. And I'm really thrilled to have broken through in my own life to the point where I could actually devote a segment to really make a somewhat long-winded, but I think very important advertisement. So if you want to reach out to me, the email is rabbi, R-A-B-B-I, rup at gmail.com. And the website is liftyourlegacy.live and at lift your legacy, lift underscore your underscore legacy on Instagram. I think it's pretty simple. You, you know where to find me because you found the podcast. Thank you so much. Tell me a little bit about your professional career and how you got to be director of marketing at National Positions. A lot of left turns is how I ended up here. Um, my career, it really started back about 2010. I started getting into, I was into uh, graphic design and I was taking a, you know, I was actually taking elective courses during doing my undergraduate and I ended up in a Adobe class. And that's what kind of prompt my interest in, because I can't draw for anything, but I could design really well. So I started in that. And then as the years went on and I continued, I got my undergraduate and uh, I switched to marketing from international business. I ended up getting both international business and marketing and uh, realized I didn't want to sit behind a computer just designing all the time. I wanted to be more strategic. 
And so from right in that period, I helped start a small experiential marketing company up in Sacramento. I'm in Westlake Village now, but started up there and just did the, did the grind, you know, of everything you do in a small business for about, you know, seven years. And when it hit about 2012, I went, I know my dates aren't off, but it makes sense in my head. When, uh, when I decided to go back to get my MBA, I do something more. I just, uh, you know, the marketing and Sacramento. Um, not quite, not quite matching. Not quite. It's a very state uh, health care government city. So I just, you know, Los Angeles or New York or San Francisco or something like that. So um, as I was doing my MBA, I got a call from an old friend of mine who worked at a company here in Los Angeles. I was three months into a six month, no, 16 month program. And they said, well, we have this kind of entry level marketing position that has to do with design. It's kind of a weird role. And they said, can you come down? So I had to decide, do I want to do my MBA, which was an executive MBA program. So it meant every weekend, that's your life for the next year and a half. Or do I want to move to Los Angeles? What do I do? So I did both. So I ended up moving to Los Angeles, doing my full-time work here and then driving up north uh, for about the next year uh, to finish that program. And in the meantime, um, that company, which will remain nameless, uh, got acquired by a bigger company. So that whole position and the whole company was liquidated into this other company. And uh, then I moved to a few different roles and until uh, 2017, where I ended up here and um, kind of went from, I'm going to come in as the um, digital marketing communications, kind of an all-encompassing role and quickly shifted into the marketing director here. And it's just been, just been grinding it out and uh, ever since. Amazing. So when it comes to, there, there's a lot there. When it comes to, I guess, finding your way in business and, you know, there's, there's like these large industries that people are interested in, you know, marketing or healthcare or whatever you want. But sometimes like your niche or where you're going to find yourself is, is we don't have any idea. So what yeah. is some advice retroactively, I guess, if you're talking to yourself back then, do you, you know, do you wish you would have done the MBA? Do you wish you would have stuck with that and done that more full time? Like what, what are the questions that you wish you would have been asking, I guess you could say, early in your career? I think early, it would have been not, you know, what's fun. Fun is always important. But it's what, what, what inspires you? What, what, is, what do you find just interesting? And the difference is, like, you can enjoy, you know, I was a dance teacher for 10 years, and that was fun. fun. Right. But yeah, so that was a, another life. But, so, I mean, that was fun. But when I was thinking long term, like, um, was I inspired anymore by that? Not, not really. I kind of did what I needed to do. And I, so I guess what I would have told, if I can pivot this, what I would have told myself is to listen more, okay. not, not just to others, but to yourself, because I think it's really easy to get involved. Let's say if I went to, if I just went to college for international business and just was very like, that's what I went for. That's what I have to do because that's what I started doing and didn't go, you know what? I like the creative side. I need to find a way to do business and be creative at the same time. If I didn't listen to that little voice, um, more specifically, I didn't listen to that little voice early on. And if I had, I probably would have done my MBA sooner, which I'm glad I did it. I'm very glad I did it because in my program, I was surrounded by finance people business owners, uh, people that were way outside my wheelhouse. So I got to learn from them and they got to learn from me. So, and that was started in 2012 and in 2014. I wish I'd done that sooner because it really opened my mind as to, you know what, I can't do it on my own. And I have to know that there are other facets, you know, in business that I need to listen to. And listening has been a big part of what I've had to do the last four or five years. Hmm. So I guess the humility of recognizing what you're good at versus what you need to bring. Um, and and I, I, I mean, I think that that's such a crucial and, and interesting concept. And maybe you could speak about that a little bit that, you know, our modern Instagram world of the solo, uh, solopreneur or the, you know, the entrepreneurs that can do everything. 
that's kind of a myth, I guess what you're saying is you need, you need to figure out how to build a team around you in order for you to be successful. Yeah. Well, and I think, okay, so let me kind of dissect a little bit about what you said about, you know, it being a, it being a myth. I think that it takes a certain type. Like, mm-hmm. for example, if you're going to do like the personal branding, you know, type, like I used to listen to, a, I mean, when it really hit my radar that that was a thing, it was watching Gary Vee. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just pounds that, you know, over and over, but he also has said, you know, I stick to the same five pieces of advice over and over. He sticks in his wheelhouse. He's like, I like sales and I like marketing. He's not saying he's a designer. He's not saying, you know, he, he kind of sticks to where, you know, what lights his fire. So I guess, um, I don't think you can't do it if you want to try to do all the pieces by yourself. But I think even those people that are influencers, people don't see there's a whole team behind them helping right. them do what they're going to do. Like myself, I'm, I'm really good at, uh, at least internally here, at, okay, I need the bones of an idea. I'm going to outline this idea kind of like this. And I have like three or four other people I go to and say, okay, can you flush this out? And they will take kind of the part of an idea and go, maybe we say it like this. And I go, yeah, that's 80% there. Now let's do it like this. So it's knowing like, for example, if someone said, put me in a room and said, here, proof content for the next 12 hours, I'd be, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd be horrible. So I think it was, you know, knowing, we said knowing your wheelhouse, knowing what you're good at. Um, growing up, I have my highest scores in mathematics, my lowest scores in grammar. Hmm. Someone said, you'll never be able to write and do content because you don't put the apostrophes in the right place. I wouldn't be doing this now. I had to kind of get over that and realize, you know what? It's fine. I can do up to 80% and I can trust other people to give me, you know, to help balance me out. And, uh, and I can learn from them at the same time. So I think that's interesting. So the idea is, is micro niching your, your skill set to the extent that, you know, if a person says my grammar sucks and so therefore I'll never be a good writer. Well, yeah. the truth is you can find a lot of people that can edit your stuff, but if you have great ideas, you know, so, so you, maybe you would make a good writer or if, or if you have great ideas, but it doesn't easily translate into the written word. If you're doing something with a speaking platform, then that's good. So I think the idea of, 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 of learning to surround yourself with a team to sort of support you or to find the best organization that utilizes your talents. I think that's a very important thing. And a lot of times I, I'll just be very, you know, honest with myself. It's like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of stuff I can't do and I keep trying to do it because it's like, you know, I got to do all this stuff and you don't do what you're not that good at. Well, yeah. And you, and you don't do what you don't like or love well. And that's right. something, something too. It's that I think there has, you have to have a bit you have to have the humility as to, like you mentioned, as to, okay, maybe I'm not good at this, but I have to find something that I really enjoy about every aspect if I'm going to put any kind of good into it. So even if there's uh, some, for example, quick examples, I, uh, going up, you know, even though I was good at mathematics, I didn't really like it. I went through statistics. I was, I couldn't figure it out. And even getting up to about four or five years ago, everyone talked about big data. I was like, ah, big data. And now I just can't figure. And then as I started getting into understanding correlation between marketing activities and this many uh, posts and this, you know, when I try to take the advertising uh, data and correlate that, you know, in the big picture, then it got interesting. Then I could find, oh, that's one part of the whole statistics part that does interest me. And then I could be effective with it because I knew what I was looking for. So I think, um, yeah, it's a combination of not just, you know, having the humility and being real with yourself about what you're good at, what you're not good at, but leaning into that and saying like, Hey, it's fine that I'm not good at this. I'm just going to lean 10 times harder into what I enjoy and what I love to do. Um, in terms of marketing, now that you have this position and I think it's, I think maybe speak to this a little bit, you know, we are all very much used to the influencers, the Gary Vee. I, I can't, it's funny, it's, it's hard to even think about what the influencer world would look like without him. There's a few like, just like main guys and they all have a special message. On the other hand, it, it, you know, a lot of the messaging is the same. What have you learned as a marketing director for you know, a successful company that you didn't learn from the influencers? Oh, man, that's a big question. <laughs> well, here's the thing, when you're getting 
depending on who you're listening to, like let's take two sides of the coin. You have Gary V, then you have someone else who I think is doesn't get as much press, but still gets a lot, Simon Sinek. Mm-hmm. The different messaging, one's all about the philosophy and leadership and the other one's about sale and grind and I spend 16 hours and, you know. So I think um, what a lot of people forget if you're solely getting your 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 inspiration and content from influencers, save maybe a few examples, you're seeing the top 5%. You're mm. seeing the cream that they've gone, this is the good stuff, that's what you're going to see. I think coming in here as much as like – I. I want to start our own podcast and I would love to do our own blog and I love to do all of this stuff. I'm one person. So I can only execute on, on so much. And I think being where I am now I'm working with the tech side to analyze you know, the lead quality. I'm working with our social side to help uh, build our Facebook audiences and execute on those campaigns. Our, I'm working with every single department. So I think what, you know, I learned in this larger company because I came from smaller ones was, you may have a goal, but it's going to be split because you have to know what you can focus your main time on and where the other 40%, 50% of your time is going to go just because you, uh, if you can't allocate your time to your one, you know, you just can't allocate all of your time to your one goal. It has to actually mesh with the goals of the graphics department and the ads department. And, um, you have to, uh, I guess in the end, I just really learned to, It's so hard to say this. It's so hard to say this, but to um, suck it up and realize that when I'm here, I'm not just here for me. No, I am here for everyone else. And even though I may want to do some really good stuff, if it doesn't positively affect everybody else, I'm not doing my job. And if, if I fail on my own with the 10% of time I want to do my own project, that's fine. But if I focus so much on me and I let six other people down, then it affects everybody. So I think, you know, even though I knew it personally coming here, if I'm not working for them, I'm not working, period. Why is that hard for you to say? It's, I think, I went so long when I'm working with smaller companies where, you know, I was doing all the pieces. You know, I would have to do the design. I am talking to the clients. I am at the events. I am doing, you know, all everything. And that's just the way it worked. When you're in a small business with two or three people, you know, you're all kind of the owners and you have to do all of that. So coming here, realizing, well, um, well, I guess in a way also when I was in, in those smaller companies, we all knew we kind of had the same role. So knowing that other people depend on you is kind of a stress that we think when we're adults, no, it's just all about me and I don't have to worry about anybody else, but you, you know, you really do. So I think um, I kind of had to step outside my own head and go, you know, it's, it's okay to, to be a little bit vulnerable and to let other people, it's okay to have other people depend on you if you're willing to take, take it on. And it took a little bit for me to admit that, yeah, that's part of what I do. It's not just about, you know, my paycheck and any of this stuff. It's, um, it's about knowing that other people depend on what I do so they can execute themselves. So it's, it's a fascinating concept, especially I think in the world of, of the influencer that there is a benefit to ultimately not shining yourself. And I think that it's something that it's hard because what you were saying, you know, why I, I a lot of, you know, I have, I have kids and a family and, you know, one of the, one of the challenges for people, I think, or for myself, is to recognize that it's not all of, and as stupid as it sounds, it's not all about you all of the time. Yeah. Um, and and other people's success, you being the um, you being the the meth- method for someone else being successful, even if it's getting out of the house at the right time, or it's you know the ad department getting their goals met. There's a benefit to that that you can't necessarily um, look at from a, from a, um, uh, again, it's not just like you're, 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 people are more than just a profit and loss statement. It's not like you can just say, you know, well, I, I, I did or I did not reach this many people today. It's like, I did my job. You might not be able to see what I did, but there was a value to what I did. Is that sort of what you're saying? (sighs) 
Mm. Sort of, because I think at the end, the only part I might say not so much is knowing that they, if I, if I heard you right, knowing that they think there's value in what I did. And I think in a way, um, I grew up, I went through many, I grew up with my, my parents were like, don't toot your own horn, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then as I got, you know, started my career, I kind of switched to, look, if you don't, Toot your own heart, no one else is going to. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't at least, which really, if you don't believe in what you're doing, and if you don't believe you have something valuable to say, why would anyone else believe it if you don't believe it yourself? So um, I guess it was, in any success I have here, I'm always like, we did good. We all, we did a good job. Steven, you did this. Jacqueline, you, this was good. And I just kind of helped put the pieces together. So um I'm losing track of what the question was, but um, sorry, there's success to that. Also, I guess the point is that there's a success not to be on a, on a team by yourself, but there's a success in empowering other people and growing your identity. For sure. For sure. And I think like that right there, that's one thing like we're working on a new, I can't go into it right now, but I'm working on a new thing with our, our head videographer, Steven. It's a new video, uh, you know, concept and project. And, and I let him, he said, I want to put this idea together. I said, good, go ahead, bring it to me when you're done. He did that. And we have a you know, first couple rounds of this stuff. And he was kind of coming to me with questions. And I'm like, I trust you to do what you're going to do. And I said, if it doesn't look at the process doesn't work, then we found out it doesn't work. We find a new process, but you know, I, it's kind of, um, it feels good to be able to just say, no, look, I, I trust you. I trust what you're going to do. And we'll think we'll find an answer together. And I don't need that coming back to me as a success of mine. I want to be able to give enough away that I can just point and go, yep, you did it. I'm just, I just gave you the green light. And um, cause in the end, I know that if the company succeeds as a whole, you know, I'm part of that. I don't, I don't need the individual, you know, uh, you know, flag being waved that it was me that did it. It was like, no, because if one of the, you know, if one of the wheels is busted, Car's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So what are the biggest trends or things that people should know when it comes to marketing or getting your message out or, or leveraging social media or getting eyes on you or being successful in sales? Video, I'm going to start with the marketing part because I like to say I'm a marketing guy. I'm not a sales guy. Some people right. will debate that. I'm like, it's just my thing. But I mean, right now, the, the biggest thing that you can do, video, video, more video, video like this. Um, and especially if you're on social, go live. Go live video and don't worry about if it's, if it's right. I think that whole era of people wanting to get into video and worrying about it being perfectly edited and all of that, they look at uh, other influencers like, what is it that I watch all the time? Neistat, like watch you know, Casey Neistat, who has, he's kind of perfected this style of not style. You know, he's kind of perfected this not perfect style. But I think people want to see what's going on right now because if they, that's why stories on Instagram has grown so quickly as opposed to just people sharing a perfectly edited video they did a week ago. But if they get in the mode of just being open and telling whatever the story is, whatever good things are happening, bad things are happening, put it out there and let people connect with you because even though they're going to do work with a company, Ultimately, they're still going to connect here first. So if they don't uh, be a little bit vulnerable that way and be willing to just put themselves out there, it's it's going to be a lot harder. Um, So video and hit that little go live button, whether it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, and uh, post your longer form content later. But just if people know that you there's something on, they're only going to see during that 10 minutes or in that 24 hours. but you're doing it every few days, it's going to help get your message out further faster. Fantastic. How does one develop the comfort to do that? Start. Start and really, that's, that's a place, okay, when I first started, this is a little bit of an offshoot. I was, for a while back, I wanted to do a vlog on my own and it didn't really work. And then I wanted to do... Um, like movie reviews on YouTube. And I did a few of those and I edited them together. Um, but when I started trying to do the blog, I looked at myself, you know, on my camera and I was just didn't like what I saw and what that actually did though. Um, I used to weigh about 285 pounds. Whoa. 
So, so when I saw that video of my first time, when I started, there's a point to this. When I started, I went, okay, it let me see that I didn't like what was happening with me. So over the next four months, I lost about 80 pounds. Wow. And, and now like, how did you do that? Um, I, no sugar, no salt, no oil, intermittent fasting, green eating. That was it. Great. Um, lots of water, lots of coffee. Great. Um, but, uh, so things like this, you wouldn't have caught me doing a year ago. Um, and I think because I, I, but it took getting started to figure out what I wanted to feel better with, to be able to put myself out there and be willing to, you know, do these interviews or the grit interview or any of that stuff. So I think just getting started and being willing to see what you maybe like and what you don't like, and then just evolve as you go. Being able to say, okay, I don't like the way I talked about this. I won't talk about that. Or um, you may realize you started and you have nothing to talk about. <laughs> so you need to realize, oh, I need to write down some ideas of what I want to discuss, you know, in my go live or something. But if you don't start, you know, you got gas in the car, but if your foot's not on the pedal, you're not going to go anywhere. So just start, don't worry about it being perfect, and then um, improve as you go. What else can you do? That, that is life. That's the way it works. I love it. Um, and so the idea of being is that you want to develop and see yourself as a, as a project and not as a finished product, and you can alter it. And again, like the idea of losing 80 pounds, for a lot of people, it's like, there's no way I can do that. But you have the fortitude, or I guess, the, the mindset to say, I can really change and I can show up however I want to, even if it's difficult or requires a lot of serious lifestyle changes. Well, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, you know, I think if you make, I don't want to go on the weight thing too much, but if I go, you know, if you do, you know, one solid change, whether that's, I can't remember who wrote the book. There was a Navy SEAL who wrote the book about waking up at 4 a.m. every morning or 4.30 every morning. Dr. Willock. Okay. So, you know, just making one change like that and knowing you can make a change there was a guy here who posts on Instagram and always, he always posts in the gym and says under construction. Uh -huh. He always says under construction. I thought that was great. So that, and I think that's, you know, it's realizing that does, you know, it doesn't really matter where you are now. You can always change it. You can always improve it. doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. And I think that's the biggest problem most people have is they think I have to change this. And then they immediately followed up with, because I failed here. It's like, no, you have, you want to change because you want to change period. You don't need to go any further than that. And if you do it once it becomes addictive and you want to do it again and again and again. And then one day you get to look back and go, wow, six months ago, I would never have thought this or done this. And uh, you just start one time and let the snowball roll. That's amazing. Matt, thank you so much. How do people find out more about you and what you're doing? Um, well, if you want to go to our company's website, it's nationalpositions.com. Um, my, if you want to just come to me, that's fine. Um, any social media, it's at Matt Erickson, LA this way at Matt Erickson, LA, you'll find me. And, um, and I believe you also posted as you wrote a wonderful article, uh, on us and it's, um, if you type Matt Erickson grit, uh, you, you'll Great. find it, Great. but yeah, find us, find me anywhere and send me a message. Happy to talk to you. There you have it, folks, another inspiring episode. If you enjoyed this, I ask you to please share this with your friends and to like us over on Rabbi Rupp through Facebook or on YouTube. And the more that we're able to get these important messages out, the more that we can really make an impact in the world. So I encourage you, please, to stay tuned. Uh, we have a ton of amazing speakers coming up and also to tell your friends about it. Thank you very much.